interesting when you um, when you attend a creativity conference for the first time. Um, I remember 150 years ago, you know, I attended the uh, American conference called SIPSI. I was part of that conference for nearly 20 years. But the first thing you find that everyone hugs, they all huggers. And it's strange if you come from a non hugging country, you really have to sort of adapt very, very quickly, otherwise, you're out. You can't hug, you're not part, part of the game. And I saw some hugging and kissing and stuff going on here too. But welcome. Um, we started this creativity cafe about 11 years ago. Um, and uh, every year, so three or four times, not kind of scheduled every quarter or whatever, but we do it a few times a year. And we've always had an amazing crowd attending this creativity cafe. As I mentioned before, um, I got the idea from a very crazy friend of ours. Some of you uh, know him, Andre Designer. I know Nick knows him well, in New York. And they've had the creativity cafe for so many years and years. And he actually said to me, why don't we start one year? And we did. And it's been really, really successful. A lot of people attend, come together and network. And uh, yeah, and, and often the networking remains and so. So thank you for attending. I think the first the play, I did the first one, and this is also one of our books on courage. We have the courage to shake hands with tomorrow. And uh, I, I gave a talk, and then after we just kept on doing it, and uh, every time we have this amazing group of people coming. Today we have uh, our very, very good friend, Dion. Dion, in a sense, to me, um, is, is the perfect example of what we call a applied creativity entrepreneur. In, in, a, in the world of creativity, in the science of creativity, you've got to distinguish between creativity and applied creativity. Some people, they, they have this creativity, all born creative, but they, they, they use it and they live with it, uh, but they don't apply it. They don't apply it in their business or in their parenting or in their teaching or whatever. But Dion is a perfect example of an applied creativity expert. Dion, I read through his CV, I've known him for 100 years, but I've read through his CV again. He's a trained mechanical engineer, but that was just from a once a putt. Um, and then about 30 years ago, of course, he started the dry ice business factory. And every year, this business has just grown and become amazing business. It's factories everywhere, international, and just doing amazing, amazing work. And Dion has attended so many of our conferences, Afri conferences, and I know that every year what he does is the applied creativity specialist. He takes that information and he uses it. And I think that's, that's critical. And Dion is a, a part, he's been on the year of the year, many, many awards. His, his chapters, he has grown amazingly. Many things, he's done the comrades a couple of times, Iron Man. And he's even a private pilot. I remember that once I saw a pilot out here in, the, in, in Waterloo area. Going, doing crazy, crazy things, and that was beyond in a, in a Russian plane. And uh, I only heard it you know, recently that was in doing up there. But we're very privileged to have Beyond with us. He's, uh, as I said, he exemplifies what creativity is all about. So be with us. And at the end of the, of the talk, I'd like to just invite people who are interested in attending UPRI, our conference, our 28th conference next year in March. As you know, it's the um, only one in Africa, and it's uh, one of the top three in the world at the moment. So anyone interested in attending the one in March, uh, you'll be at this table, and you can ask them what you would like to ask them. Do you want to go to my yard? I was going to ask Right, good morning everybody and welcome. Uh, if you don't have a chair, just go and fetch your chair on that side and uh, mark yourself from up here. All right, a few basics, rules of engagement. So maybe you're going to hear some things today that you know. Maybe you're going to hear some things that you don't know. The attitude that I want is not, I know that, but thank you for sharing. Are you in with that one? Excellent. All right. All right. There are rewards. For participation, Mr. Lind. So if you want them, Mr. Lind, 
You must participate. Okay. So, so will be the Mr. Lind distributor. All right. Okay, so I've been a businessman for 30 years and I did not grow all the 30 years. That's only the past 10 years the business did quite well. And obviously, I'll tell you why. So I made a lot of every mistake that you can make. And all the stresses that you can have in business, I had it. So I know that. All right. Okay, so uh, important, look out for takeaways today. So make sure that you have at least three takeaways that you can take with you. So if you run up a notepad, there's clicks. If you run up a pen, there's clicks. Otherwise, we will, we will distribute some papers later that you can use. All right, and then important, think 2030. Are you in with that one? No, you're, I'm not a visionary. Try. Just begin today. Think 2030. So everything that we do today, we think 2030. All right. So just in terms of what we're going to do today, I'm just going to brush over the NBI profile for those of you who don't know it. And then I'm going to talk about what your job description as business owners should be. I'm going to spend a few minutes on business 101, the basics of business. And then I'm going to talk about the big five of business. Now that's a, a hint. I'm going to ask you, what do you think is a big five of business? And then we're going to look at the business that's sort of bankrupt. But we're going to spend about five minutes on that one. Then we're going to look on, look on sales and spend a few, few minutes on sales and how to create a million dollar brand. And then I'm going to end off with how to create a creative environment in your business. And that's it. So, uh, and now this thing is not working. Uh, yeah, cool. I need your help here. I did a dry run yesterday, and I did two dry runs this morning, so. Okay, here we are. Thank you. Let's see if you have your IT specialist with you. Let's give Yaku a hand. All right, so I want to just give honor to Quivers this morning. Um, I've met, well, I've, I've, I've become involved uh, with a business mentor and he's, he spoke about uh, brain profiles. He, he introduced brain profiles to me and my company about 15 years ago and I was fascinated. Then he invited me to the Creativity Conference, which was also about 15 years ago, by the way, every year, March, for about four days at Frank Caribo. So remember that one, first week of March. So uh, NBI, Maitland Brain Institute, Brain Index, Marty, Instruments, all right. So um, there are more than 60 countries, 20 languages, and uh, I just want to read for those of you who don't know Quibbles, the privilege that we have to have Quibbles with us here. I'm, I'm just going to read three out of the 50. He's the president of the South African Creativity Foundation. He holds six degrees, including two masters, a doctorate, a postdoctorate, cum laude, uh, identification and development of creative behavior. And then he's written over 80 books. Have you read some of his books? Yes. All right. And he, he's also the Guinness World Record now, the co-author of Making the Impossible Possible. The book of more than a hundred pages written in the fastest time ever. Listen to this one. Four and a half minutes. Let's give him a hand. All right, so just just some refreshing if you don't know how the pro brain profile works. We recognize that one. All right. So Quibus came up with this many, many moons ago. He said hundred years. Uh, L1, L2. R1 and R2. Now, if we break it up, in the L1, it's your realist, your analyst. It's an eight dimensional brain profile. Uh, the L2 is the organizer, the preserver. The R2 is the socializer, empathizer. And the R1, the imagineer, strategist. Who do you know where you are? Who's, who's the L1s here? L1s? How many? Four, five, six. L2s? 
three, four, five, six. Okay, wonderful people to have in your company. Artis and our ones. All right, so we've sort of distributed evenly. Okay, so more detail. Um, uh, the L1, factual guys, focus and accurate. Is that correct? If you say you're an L1? All right, and then the L2, discipline. They love rules. Tradition, preservers, and the detailed people. All right, then uh, the R2, empathy. Socializers, they love social. And then networking. All right, and then let's go to the R1, strategists, flexible, imagineer, vision, big picture. Just to get back to this one, as an engineer, I worked purpose for the, at least the first 15 years in the L1. Was the engineer is L1. But only, I only found out after I did the brand profile that I've got a strong R2. Uh, and, and you know, the, the change that it made in my life and in my business was massive. So I had to rewrite my job description because of you. But I found my sweet spot. So I found out that I said I'm supposed to be the visionary of the company, and it comes naturally. The strategist, the innovator, the inspirator, and the motivator. So if you are a business owner here, if you want the slides, I'll send it to you. So I'll just see it. Don't worry. You have to, don't have to take notes. So that's what, that's, your, that's what your job description should be. Now you're going to tell me, Dion, I'm not even halfway a visionary. Remember what I said? Think 2030. So let's start somewhere. All right. Business 101. The basics of business. All right. The spring of team. That one, two, three weeks ago for the second time in eight years. Why are they so good? Why did they win? All right, now it's time to earn uh, Dr. Lind. So that's not, no, not the Lind for you. Preparation, okay, you can have a... Basics? Okay, that's not a that's not a sweet. Yeah, that's like a hunger. Vision? Why? Eric? Good coach. Who's a brassy? No, no, yeah, he still like So now? So the country? Okay. Why Why they did so well? Why didn't they see the nearest rugby team here, uh, rugby club? It's, I think it's. Uh, Harlequins. Why didn't they send the Harlequins? The rugby players are the same size. Maybe not as fit, but we can get them as fit as within three months. Maybe the same weight, even heavier. Why did, why did they send the Springboks, that specific team, and not the Harlequins? Okay, right, people, but there's something more about it. It's a job of Experience. Teachable, that's that's important. Other persistence. Right people in the right job. And that that makes them masters of the fundamentals. They were masters. Now what what are the what are the fundamentals of rugby? What's the rugby spillers is like in it? You must be able to pass the ball. Discipline, you must be able to kick the ball, you must know the rules. And it can go on for half an hour. Masters of the fundamentals. Now, as a business, what are the fundamentals in your business or in business? Because if you, if, if you use the same fundamentals in your business, you can use it in any other business and you'll get exactly the same results. All right, so I came up with the idea. The business big five, because we have a lot of uh, uh, visitors on. We are online. We're streaming live now internationally. So we're going to talk about the big five and how you can pull it into your own business. Right. So the business big five, the first fundamental, which is to me the most important fundamental in your business is sales, and that's something that you don't learn in school. 
They don't teach you in university, but it's one of the most important skills that you should have. And you can teach anybody to sell. And I'm not talking about cold calling, because that's the idea that we've got about selling. All right, so selling, hunting, that's why the line is there. Remember that one. The second one is price. Price is a strategy. Now, I'm using a cheetah because he uses a lot of strategy to hunt. All right. Next one is cost of sales. What does it cost you or cost of goods to produce your product, especially the raw material? And you need a thick skin. Well, I know for that one, to negotiate. All right, and then efficiency. A leopard is extremely efficient in when he's hunting. And efficiency is connected to cost of sales. And then the last one is the elephant in the room, and that is expenses. So these are, the, to me, of the 30 years, the five fundamentals in business. And if you, as a business owner, not focusing on it, you're, not, you're doing the wrong thing. And you can go to each of your staff. If they're not focusing on one of the five, what are they doing there? Now we can break that up and we can spend a whole day on it. But come to the conference in March. And I'm going to teach you more about that one. Okay. So a friend of mine started a business a year ago. His name is Rocco. And his uh, girlfriend's name is Roxy. They started a new business by the name of Nuco. Now they produce this so his sales for last month was a million, and he's very proud of it. His cost of sales, 400,000. So this is a normal income statement, expenses statement that all of you should have every month. So his gross profit, retail wins, 600,000. His expenses, 700,000. So is he sitting with a profit or a loss? Net profit or loss? Minus 100. Now the good news. He's got 200,000 cash in the bank. How long will this business last? Two months. I'm all with the no sweets, guys. Two months. And then you're going to become desperate. You won't sleep at night and I say, so on the right, on the right, you're to summer to from stress. So we have to do something. I said to him, don't worry. I've got a lot of consultants here today. And we get, I'm going to teach them about the big five and we're going to come up with solutions. So, what do we, what's the first thing that we have to do in this business? Get the sales up. Second thing, get the price up. How long does it take to get the price up? Three minutes. You decide your price should go up. Listen, this, this business is in dire straits. You have to change the price. Cost of sales, bring it down with efficiency. You have to go and negotiate with your suppliers and say, listen, I'm in trouble. We need help. Can we bring the price down? Many, many ways to do it. Again, come to the conference and we'll discuss it. Then efficiency. Efficiency and cost of sales are together. If you use, a, if you use a raw material that we do in the dryers manufacturing, efficiency is everything. And uh, the secret of your success is even in your daily routine, what you do in, in, the, in the factory. So you have to get your efficiency up, which is part of the cost of sales. And then the last thing, again, the elephant in the room, salary cut 10% immediately. We have to save the business. From the owner down to the cleaner, immediately cut. Many, many ways to get it down. All right, so price goes up, sales go up. That is part of your sales, cost of sales. So two, two things that we have to do in the first line, two things in the second line. Do we focus on gross profit? No. Do we focus on net profit? No. Focus on sales price, cost of sales efficiency, and expenses. All right, so let's play again. Let's improve all five. How many percent? Ten. Bert, jij kreeg een keer een lijn in daar. 60 is het af, man. Somebody say 10. I like this one. Bert, kan je sweet, kan je hier komen sweet. All right, he suggested 10%. Guess what? It's increased by 10%. Is it difficult? Yes. Is it doable? Yes. All right, so all are going to go up by 10%. All right, so look at that one. We've increased the sales by 
That, that was the result. Exactly. We, we're going to get to that one. That is ruthless Islam for you. All right. So price goes up and, and sales goes up from a million to 1.21 million. Just, just by increasing 10%. All right. Cost of sales, you bring down. Plus your efficiency goes up. So for, uh, from 400,000, the improvement is to 3 to 4, 324,000. So suddenly your gross profit goes up from 600,000 to 886, close to 200,000, just because of, of, of the basic, a few basics. Focus on the fundamentals. Okay. Cost of sales, 3 to 4. And your expenses, 630. So what happens? This guy, within a year, he's going to sit with a deficit of 1.2 million. But because of what he did, focusing on the fundamentals, he will have 3 million in the bank by the end of the year. And in 10 years' time, 30 million. But just doing the basics right. Okay, so I'm going to dig a bit deeper and just start to stick to the, 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 the sales. Now, if you want more sales, what do you need? Is your tight for a sweet? Hint is on the board already. You need more also. Also, here is the sweet one. Yes, sir. Also, the sweet. All right, you need more customers. I have the job of your sweet. All right, so more customers. Well, if, now there are many techniques, and I'll quickly touch on it. But to get customers, what do you need? Marketing and what 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 is the result of marketing? Leads and then once you have a lead, what do you do? You have to, what do you have to do with the lead? Convert the real problem with crime. So you convert it, and that leads to customers. So number of leads times conversion rate will give you customers. And now the customers a customer is somebody that buys from you or buys your services. All right, now I'm going to dig just for a moment touching it, but we're not going uh, to spend the day on that one. So once you have a customer, what is the number of transactions you have with a customer? What is the average rent per transaction? And listen to each one of these. Number of leads, conversion rates, transactions, average rent, between 60 and 80 different methods. I'm just going to focus on a few methods today. That will give you turnover. And turnover times margin will give you profit. Now, a clever person once said turnover is vanity. Profit is sanity. All right. All right. Let's just focus on leads and conversion rate, which will lead to customers. So now you can ask me, Dion, how do I get more leads? Lead generation. I'm going to show 30 methods. I've got 90, 90 methods on paper here, but I'm just going to focus on 30 now. Website, we we'll agree with that one. Should you have a website and spend time on your website every week, we'll pay somebody to do that. Social media, SEO, yeah, SEO specialists here, yeah, I've seen them. Social media specialists, Google Ads, those four, you have to spend every week. New brands, create new brands. I'm going to tell you a little bit more about what we did on new brands. Now, I'm just going to focus on that one thing today in terms of our business. Brochures, ideal client, did you define your ideal client? Monthly mails, marketing consultants, you have a few marketing consultants sitting here, sales manager, point of sales manager, sales team, selling incentives, uniform dress cards, business cards. Did you bring your business cards today? Who didn't bring business cards? Sisvia. This is a marketing event. You must use it. All right. Radio ads. TV ads. Point of sale display. If you have a shop. But there's a point of sale display with the cakes. It was in the middle. Excellent way of displaying videos. Trading hours. Extend your trading hours. Maybe on two Saturdays. Write a book. Write articles. Emails. Packaging. Improve your packaging. Agents, appoint agents, business forum, become, become part of a business forum. I see this is a business forum. Network, BNI, 
conference, trade shows, supplier referrals? Did you ask your suppliers for referrals? I asked them. Front and signage. Okay, so let's just focus on five. New brands. I, uh, I bought some coffee yesterday and I asked him about what new brands they have and they had one box there. It cost me a lot of money, but I love new brands. So I spent, somebody thought about it and thought about me. So I bought new, uh, a new uh, extra coffee. Okay, brochures. Normally, if you have new brands, you have to start with, with the brochures also. So I'm going to give this to you, uh, Caroline and uh, Charles of here. All right, ideal client. I just want to tell you a story about the ideal client. Many years ago, I sat in a, in a training session with Donna Rachelson. I don't know if you know Donna. She's one of the best business ladies in the country and also educator, marketing specialist. And she asked me, a lot of us sit down today, and she asked me, Dion, um, how does your audio client look? So, well, everybody, I'm going to your clean. Said, no, 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 you're wasting my time. Go and sit with your team and come back with, with, with answers. So I booked a farming out for a day with my team and we sat for the whole day defining our ideal clients. Eventually we had 40 different things on whiteboards. It took us about four hours to get to 40. And then we had, we had to get rid of the last 20, order it from one, prioritize from one to 40 and we get, got rid of the last 20 and we sat with 20 and suddenly we realized but this is our ideal client, and we're still using it today. I'll, I'll show it to you in one of our brands. So, and I got back to and said, I've got my ideal client now. You know what? In number 19, we wrote, it would be nice if our ideal client is close to us because it's, it's expensive to deliver our products and our services. And a year later, we found out our ideal client is one kilometer from us. And I passed them every day, and I didn't know that. But suddenly, when I saw it, I realized. Okay, so marketing consultants, if you, if you can't do marketing yourself, hire somebody that can do the marketing for you. By the way, if you appoint the sales manager, you just have to ask him two things after you've decided to appoint him, before you appoint him. You have to ask him two questions. What are the two questions? Is your type for sweets? His job description. Can you have a missing note? You only ask two questions. What do you take accountability for? How do you want to be measured? That's it. And then you write it down and you stick to it. Okay, same, same with the salesperson. Because well, they're going to sell to you. They're going to sell themselves to you. Be careful. Right, then a network like BNI. I've saw many BNI people here. BNI means it? Yeah, it's many of them. All right. Wonderful, wonderful network worldwide. And then conference, that's something that you do quite well. Your product, you bring it, I mean, you've started the conferences and that's the way we, we know more about your products and how to use it. So start a new conference. I don't think you're going to attend the Dry Ice Conference, but uh, we'll attend the Creativity Conference. All right. So sales. Now the next question you're going to ask me about conversion. We're struggling. We've got all these leads, but we can't convert them. So conversion rate. Again, there are more than 70 different methods to improve your conversion rate. I'm going to just touch on the first 30, and then we're going to discuss the first, the top part. USB. What is USB? Oh, sorry. You're so sweet, you're so sharp. All right, product quality, improve your quality. You have to improve your quality monthly. New products, develop new products, ex exclusive products, product range, extend your product range, stock on shelves, you need to sell if you don't have the stock on shelves. Dog with that, dog with that. All right, value versus price. You never sell on price. You always sell on value. No matter if it's products or it's services, it's always about value. Well, somebody, there will be a rhino on the other side, on the other country, other company that's going to force you to bring your price down. You always stay with your value. All right, sales process, I'm just going to touch on that one. Sales targets, CRM, who knows what a CRM is? Customer relationship management, also, also sweet. 
the dominant. Right, provide solutions, monthly budget forecast actuals, team appearance, how your team looks, especially your sales team, LinkedIn profiles. What have you spent at least half an hour a week on your LinkedIn profile? It's so important. Two, three, it's all three from the low. Three lemurs, all the your suites, right? All right, in store sales, product list, and with a product list, there's a, a, a price list, EFTs, credit cards. Timely response, so important, video demos, sales area, your top six elements. I'm going to talk about that for a moment. Intro, yourself, greet, use names, ask and listen, NBI profile, sales scripts, ask for sale, problem, solve problems, follow up, company profile. All right, USP, unique selling point or proposition. Google it if you don't know what it is. A new products, develop new products, value versus price. I've spoken about that once. Sales process, you can tell me what the sales process is. You work with the, with the lead, converting to a customer. No, like, trust. You can spend a lot of time, money on that three. And then try, buy, rebuy, and refer. But the first three is the most important. It's like dating, dating a girl. What is the most important thing if you date a girl? Mensen als je daar eerst een keer een goal gedaan hebt, wat is wat is het belangrijkste van de tijd? The movie tickets in your pocket, the next day. So if 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 you if you're working with the, with with a new lead, the next day is the most important. The next meeting, you can't leave without a day. So important. All right. Top sales. Top uh, sales area, top elements in your sales area, which uh, what is important, and uh, just test this area. Light, enough light in your sales area. What else? Air, smell, temperature, color, sound. And we're gonna we're gonna get back to this one again. So now I'm gonna talk to you All right. So ask and listen, and ask for the sale. Once you get to the no like trust, buy. Ask for the sale. An NBI profile, if you if you understand your own NBI profile, you can discern what brain profile your lead is. You're 10 years ahead of your competition. And that, that made a huge difference in our company because of that. And we profile people just by spending time with them. All right, and then solve problems. People have problems, solve it. Okay, just one back. I'm just going to focus on one new brands and how we use creativity to, to create new brands. Now, that was my first brand in 1994. I paid 50 Rand for the artist to do that because <laughs> that's, that's what I got for 50 Rand. All right, so that is our latest brand that we use as a company. Biggest challenge with dry ice it's cold, it's white, and it's hard. How do you make that attractive to, 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 to customers? Exactly, I don't know. So 10 years ago, after many creati creativity conference, I sat one night and I sat and I identified a, a creative environment in that moment. I sat down in Fine Lake Inn with my sister, and had two daughters. They were teenagers, they were sort of in the, the, the first year, second year in university. They came from the UK and we sat in, around the campfire, we had a bride, with each with a glass of green wine. And I, they asked me about dry ice and how do you use it? And they were just out of curiosity. And, um, and I, I identified, this is a creative environment, I must use it because I was trying to do it through the creativity conferences. So I said to them, if I have to sell dry ice to you, what would you like to see? And the first thing they said to me, they would love to see a funky couple. So the same person that's got the business that's in trouble, Rocky, and Roxy was born that night. So they said to me, and, and I googled this picture, I sent it to my artist, a funky couple around the campfire, that's the first thing. And I said to him, what else? And they said, no, they, uh, a nice four by four, camping, but they talk about safari, they don't say camping. All right, so 
So I Googled and I got eventually to that picture. And then I, they said it should be in nature and that's my rip scoop and all the camel thorns. And, and I sent that to my artist and I said, listen, this is, this is the idea. I wrote everything down and I got back and I sent it to my artist. And that night our first brand was born, or that week, or actually that night, but a week later. And we call it Dry Ice for Leisure. And that is eventually where it ended up. And it's one of our most successful brands now after 10 years. All right, you, I'm, I'm still not satisfied, tell me more. All right, now we have to get the dry ice to the customers. So we thought about a few ideas. So we came up with that one and our artists convert our idea into that brand. The next brand, Rocky, is a fisherman. He loves deep sea fishing. So uh, I Googled that. So I'm not the artist, but I can be creative through Google. So I Googled that picture, that photo, and that one, and that one, and eventually I decided, all right, I'm going to try. So that is what I did. That's, that's the best that I can do. So I took these four photos, and I sent, again, I sent, I sent it to my graphic artist, and it, we came up with Rise for Fishing, and that's what he did. Don't you think it's nice? All right, so Rise for Fishing was born. And uh, Rocco is also a hunter. So that is Rise for Hunting. And we're doing quite well with Rise for Hunting also. And uh, 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 Rocco is doing so well. He bought himself a farm two years ago. So uh, he's a farmer now, and he brands his cattle. We can, I, I remember I sat in... It's longer sense four years ago, and I, I thought about how are we going to get dry us to the farmers. And now we're at Nampo, and, and they're inviting us now. We don't have to be to be there, and it's, it's working extremely well. But if you're not go to our website, I can't say any more about that. All right, then dry us for one farming. We got involved with dry us for one farming last year. I bought out my competition, and uh, in short, they use dry us with white grapes to prevent some uh, oxidation. And that's the difference between a cheap white wine and a Sauvignon Blanc. So remember that if you drink a Sauvignon Blanc tonight, thank you, Dior. All right, so we came up, that is a new brand that we launched last year, in the end of last year. All right, and then Grice for boreholes. Maybe if you've got boreholes, sometimes they get blocked. Grice is a wonderful way to open your borehole. So that is uh, also a new brand that we launched last month. And then special effects. Now we know that if we take dry ice and we put it in a bucket of hot water, what do we get? Smoke. But how do you sell it? So Rocco and Roxy loves dancing. So they use special effects. Think about the school concert that you have or that special effect if your daughter's first at the wedding have to dance. So that is dry for special effects. All right. Then we came up with dry ice for cocktails. We know if you put dry ice in a drink, and we came up with these ideas. So, so uh, we put dry ice in a small stick. We also produce that, and that's what you get. Beautiful. So we've also invented uh, four cocktail recipes. You can get it on our website. And then dry ice for catering. All right. All right, so we have to get to the caterers. Where do you are in catering? No, nobody. Please, we are at the back. So this is what we do with drives for catering. So you must bring me not to the mess here. Come and see. So if you, if if you um, you know, if you serve your sushi. So yeah. So that is uh, drives for catering. And then drives for engineering, string shops. Where yes, so yes, we are in engineering, can string the shops. And we sent it for, for mines that buy a lot of dry ice. And they dry ice for vintage cars. Clean the vintage car, clean the engines. It's a waterless, chemicalless, uh, uh, green way of cleaning a car, the car's engine and chassis. And then dry ice for racing cars. You remember in the beginning of the year, we had uh, e racing, e Grand Prix yeah, in Cape Town. They have to cool the batteries down between the races. So we came up with that one. And then drives for emergencies, ESCOM is our friend, obviously. So if you have power outages for longer than six hours. And then this is a brand that we're launching today. So this to follow now, but it's okay to follow me. So dry us for medical and pharmaceuticals. So you're the first people ever to see this. 
and that's how I like his brand. So we transport human organs, we transport uh, medicines, vaccines, only support uses a lot of dryers. And then dry blasting, we do blasting in the automotive, we do blasting to substations, we do blasting for. All I want to show you is what you can do if you have a good graphic artist and you give him some, some good ideas of what you want from him. Okay. And that's the brand that we're going to launch in a month's time, printing and packaging. So you didn't see that. All right, so the last, the last thing that I want to touch on is, Dion, yes, I hear what you say. How do you create a creative environment? Now I'm going to give you guidelines. Charles, so you're looking for the creative environment. All right. I've got, a few, I've got 14 ideas that you can use. Important. The role of leader is not to come up with all the great ideas. Listen to this one. Not necessarily your role. The role of the leader is to create an environment in which great ideas can happen. And Simon Sinek said that. Okay, so how do you create a creative environment? Again, we will, we will try. Press with. What is this? Yeah, 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 it's the fair. Chris? That, that's, yeah, 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 change the environment. It's, it's the most important one. Yes, exactly. Also, you can make a lot of things with the same time. Now, just, yes, the yes, but we're going to get to that one. What else? Yeah. Think out of the box. Fun. Yes, yes. Brain profiles, yes. And, and we, I'll touch on that one. Brainstorming, yes, in small groups. All right. That's the office. Get out of the office. Change environment. Somebody said that. Cell phones. If there's a cell phone in a, in a creative environment, it's gone. Especially if it rings. Keep the cell phones and make sure as a leader the cell phones are outside. But nobody answers cell phones while you're in that environment. As you on cold foot, barefoot, comfortable clothing, no work clothes, make it as comfortable as possible. All right. The elements, remember the elements? What are the six elements that we need there? Light, sun, fresh air, smell, temperature, color, sound. Focus on that. You, you won't believe what a massive difference each one of these makes. All right. Coffee. What is the creative environment of the coffee? Now are you going to tell me, yes, but you had one. I identified the creative environment. I did not create it. So you will identify creative environments and then you have to use it. This is a creative environment. So afterwards, you sit with the one or two people and, and you use this environment and this energy to create. All right. And obviously, we need seating. We need to sit and we need to write. Um, elements, make sure... These proper elements. Give people paper to write on. Give them color pens. Important. Remember, you sit with the different brain profiles and yes buts and the yes ands, and you can find it on both sides. But normally, the L ones will start with the yes buts. So, create. If you have a four hour session, first two hours, you're only allowed to say yes and. So, whatever you said, Harad, I must say yes and. What will happen? Creative juices start to flow. Okay? And then after the, the second break, what do you do? You give the yes, yes, but chance. And that's what we did when, when we when we decide on the ideal plan. We got 40 ideas just because yes and. And then the yes but we got rid of the bottom 20. And eventually we decide, all right. Okay. P breaks. Please, for me, I drink a lot of water. You need to drink a lot of water while you're doing this. So at, you can't concentrate for longer than an hour. Actually, 45 minutes max, but you can stretch out because it's a relaxed environment. Then break at least for 15 minutes, and then an hour again. And then you break for half an hour to an hour, and then you come back. So it's actually all day. All right, multimedia, use screens. Whiteboards, whatever you have, maximum, use everything. And then food. Stay away from sugary foods, high energy foods, fruits. And then break away, somebody said it, in small teams. 
and brainstorm and, and let the teams compete against each, each other. It's wonderful what energy you get out of it. And then somebody must take notes. It's so important. Okay, so you can you can use that. Um, so to me, I, I, I just Google this one again and say, I think that is a creative in one. We, 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 all right. So what what if you what if you take your team to let's say Bazarutu for 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 three days and it costs you hundred thousand, but you create one brand that will give you a turnover of under two hundred thousand a month. Is it worth it? So you have to think out of the box. No, yes, but it's when it gets to a creative environment. Okay. So what about that office? That's why you have a, you have a little home at sea. Sit there in the mornings and drink coffee and think about, you have to sit and think every day and read books. Okay. So that's just a few ideas, maybe a bit overboard, but that is what you can do. Okay, so you say, Dion, I'm not there. I'm not there. All right, I hear you. Come to the Creativity Conference next year, March, from the 5th to the 8th, if I'm correct, the Tuesday. If you hire me to consult you, you're going to pay more per hour and you're going to pay for the whole week there. So please don't phone me. Go to the Creativity Conference. We get speakers from all over the world, from Canada, from the UK, from America, from Australia, the best of the best. And you can choose your sessions every day. You have the choice. You can choose whoever you want to listen to. Because we have got four to five different workshops simultaneously. So you can choose where you, who you want to attend to. So um, I just want to, you see this, me and my brother, it's many moons ago, six, seven years ago, so was I document. And I, there was so of not. Here's my graphic artist, the Lynette Stone. Nico Meyer. He's the brain behind all my art here. And please, he's mine. Don't contact him. <laughs> all right, so just, just that one. That one, yeah. That one we did six, seven years ago. I stand, here I stand with it. And, 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 and when, when I wrote this down, it was 2016. I thought, the only clear nowhere line and you're taking chances now. Everything happened exactly as we did. And that's just one of the seven workshops, eight workshops that are in that week. So, and eventually we got to Caroline. That is how we write down our goals. And every three months, quarterly goals, we write it down. And we come up with, with all the ideas. It's very creative. But you see on the left hand side corner for the left brainers, there's also an Excel spreadsheet. <laughs> okay. So, Clovis, I'm going to give over to you. So, the Africa's Creativity, Radical Creativity for Radical Times, date 5 to 8 March 2024. Diarize rise your diary. Well, thank you very much. It's amazing. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.